This is Vern Venom Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Ours is a troubled, precarious, and war-buffeted planet. In the period between Sarajevo and Iwo Jima, 31 years, there were nearly 100 million men, women, and children killed in warfare. Since the year 1896, our world has hardly known one year without war, massacre, pogroms, or some other form of slaughter and barbarism. It has been estimated that between 1900 and 1930, the powers of Europe alone were engaged in 74 separate wars. It is also a fact that during the last half century, more than 150 million lives were destroyed in or as a direct result of war. Wrote Charles Sumner, the American statesman, give me the money that has been spent in war and I will clothe every man, woman, and child in an attire of which kings and queens would be proud. I will build a schoolhouse in every valley over the whole earth. I will crown every hillside with a place of worship consecrated to peace. And Rabbi John Wise says enough treasure was spent in the first two world wars and will continue to be spent in their aftermath to bridge every river in the world, to drain every swamp, to irrigate every desert, to fertilize every field, to teach every man his alphabet, and to do all these things in our day, which would redeem the world from its very terrors and fears of war. During World War II, one Englishman said to another, as they took shelter in a raid, why doesn't God simply stop this terrible war? And the second replied, because God didn't start it. God is not some sort of king sitting on a throne issuing mandates to this one or that one, taking sides with one against another as human monarchs might do. God is the compassionate, loving, merciful father of all, of every human being on this earth, black or white, red or yellow, every hue or shade between, and think how the fatherly heart of God must grieve and mourn at what has been called by the poet man's inhumanity. To man. We are global villagers upon this earth and called to live as one great family of God. The story is told about the bells that ring in a little village in the foothills of the Allegheny Mountains. In the year 1865, the folk of Pleasant Valley created a memorial to their loved ones lost in the Civil War. Into one mighty heap, they piled all the relics of the Civil War's bitter battles, the old brass cannons, the battered muskets, the broken swords, and rusted bayonets. And then they melted them all down, and from this litter of war, the gentle bells of Pleasant Valley were cast to ring out over the green fields and the fertile farms throughout the years of tranquility and peace. And so must the ringing bells of love be forged from the very armaments of hatred. As humankind learn, the greatest teachings this planet has ever heard, the love of God and the love of others, Jesus of Nazareth's two great commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. General Ulysses S. Grant declared, nothing has ever been decided by war that could not be decided without it. And if decided after war, then why not before it? Arnold Toynbee wrote in the prospects of Western civilization, we are now supremely efficient in repairing the material damage caused by war, but we are no better than our ancestors were at coping with the spiritual devastation which wars inflict. Declared Jesus, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, pray for those who despitefully use you. He said, blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and speak all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Be of good cheer, be not anxious. And he declared, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Spiritual life. The tragedy of war, wrote Harry Emerson Fosdick, is that it uses man's best to do man's worst. And Lincoln wrote, military glory, that attractive rainbow that rises in showers of blood, that serpent's eye that charms to destroy. I think of war, wrote the philosopher David Lawrence, as the expression of a deep-seated impulse, the impulse to human friction. It doesn't begin when armies open fire on one another or end when guns are silenced. 
It begins in the hearts and the minds of men and women long before the bugles sound and the drums play. And it continues long after the last of the heroic dead have been buried or returning armies have been demobilized. It begins, in short, in the hearts and minds of individual human beings. Jesus called humankind to give our hearts, our minds, our souls, our very beings to the living God who gave us our lives in the first place. And in that consecration, that commitment of our time, our energies, all we are, all we hope to be, is newness of life, is rebirth, is a spiritual renaissance which begins in the heart, the mind, the life of the individual human being, which can begin in your life, and which, in time, will change this planet because only transformed individuals can create a transformed world. Only better men and women can fashion a better society. Only spiritually advanced citizens can architect an advanced civilization. Henry Smith Lapeer has written, there have been 871 major wars in the last 1,000 years, primarily because men have not been willing to accept the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man as fundamentals of our life together on this earth, end of quote. War will someday be abolished by the will of man and the will of God, wrote John Haynes Holmes in his book, If This Be Treason. This assertion, he writes, does not in any way invalidate the truth that war is fundamentally caused by impersonal, political, economic, and social forces, but it is the destiny of man to master and control such force, even as it is his destiny to harness the rivers, chain the lightning, and ride the storm. It is human will operating under social forces that has abolished slavery, infanticide, dueling, and a score of other social enormities. Why should it not do the same for war, he wrote. Let our lives be living testimonies of peace. Peace is defined as a condition of amity or concord among parties who might otherwise be engaged in strife or combat. The opposite, in short, of war. The prophet Isaiah wrote of an age to come, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And Jesus of Nazareth said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The night before Franklin Delano Roosevelt died, he wrote these words, we seek peace, enduring peace. More than an end to war, we want an end to the beginnings of all wars. Yes, an end to this brutal, inhuman, and thoroughly impractical method of settling differences between governments. The mere conquest of our enemies is not enough. We must go on to do all in our power to conquer the doubts and the fears, the ignorance and the greed which have made this horror possible. Today, wrote Roosevelt, we are faced with the preeminent fact that if civilization is to survive, we must cultivate the science of human relationships, the ability of all peoples of all kinds to live together and to work together in the same world at peace. Today, as we move against the terrible scourge of war, as we go forward toward the greatest contribution that any generation of human beings can make in this world, the contribution of lasting peace, I ask you to keep up your faith. The only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. Let us move forward with strong and active faith. End of quote. Said Jesus, have faith in God. With God, all things are possible. When God and human beings strike an accord and go into partnership spiritually, great things can and do and will take place. When Basil Matthews asked Sir Alfred Zimmon, what in your opinion is the greatest obstacle between us and the building of enduring world peace? Sir Alfred answered, the small scale individual. The teaching of Jesus can enlarge the perspective of every human being. When Japan surrendered at the end of World War II, General MacArthur wrote, we have had our last chance. If we do not now devise some greater and more equitable system, Armageddon will be at our doorstep. The problem, basically, is theological. This is a military general writing, General Douglas MacArthur. 
But he says the problem of the world is basically theological and involves a spiritual recrudescence and improvement of the human character. It must be of the spirit if we are to save the flesh. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. A spark of spirit indwells your mortal mind this very moment. And if you will work with God's guidance for your life, you will discover ways in which you can be a personal center of peacefulness on this earth. Once at a banquet in Southern California, I sat next to the woman who had written the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me, which has been used by international organizations around the world. But that sums it up. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me and let it begin with you. In our lives, with God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let us walk with our brothers in peace and harmony. In the midst of World War II, one man of faith who was living in Europe wrote about his life. On the surface there is storm, but 20 fathoms down it is quite calm. Let there be a peace of your heart and soul, knowing the living love of God, the certitude of eternal life, that just as a bee goes from flower to flower gathering nectar, so you are destined one day to voyage from star to star gathering light in God's great friendly universe. Let there be peace of heart, of soul, of mind and spirit. One English psychiatrist has written, with peace in his soul, a man can face the most terrifying experiences, but without peace in his soul, he cannot manage even as simple a task as writing a letter. The peace which passes all understanding is the peace of God. It is of God, and it can and will transform your very life. When Robert Louis Stevenson went to Samoa and the Pacific Ocean, to regain his health. He found the natives in constant warfare with each other, but through his great kindness, he won their hearts. When he found much difficulty in climbing the steep hill to his house at the top, the natives, in their gratitude, built him a proper road up to his house, and they called that road the way to a loving heart. Love always acts. It is the desire to do good to someone else. While visiting in a foreign country, an unreligious tourist happened to see a religious nurse dressing an open leprous wound. The sight was a shocking one. It was revolting to the eye and to the stomach. I wouldn't do that for a million dollars, said the tourist. Neither would I, smiled the nurse in response. But what a million dollars would not do, God's love in her heart for that poor sufferer did do. The Apostle John wrote, If a man says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God? whom he has not seen. May the love of God and humanity dominate your life and transform you from the inside out that you may live peacefully and joyously as the son or daughter of God you were born and created to be and bring a new age of light and of understanding, of friendship, compassion, and spirituality to this troubled and war-bled planet. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.